All right, so welcome to Intuition to Intimacy. This is Abby Gooch, and I am especially excited today because Keith Leone is actually a friend of a friend. Um, Marsha Reynolds has been on our show before for Intuition to Income, and she's just amazing. So when I got her email about Keith, I was just, I knew it was something special. And so Keith and I have been able to have some conversations before this interview, and he is just a gem. I mean, he is so connected in the real world and the spiritual world. He works with angels, but he's also like a book publisher and gets people out there huge. Um, so he's going to tell you more about what he does. But I just really wanted to bring him on because he has such a keen intuition. And he also not only has been successful in the world, but has an amazing relationship with his partner. I believe his wife, if I'm not sure, like for a long time. I think they've been married a long time now. So um, Keith, if you want to go into that more and introduce yourself. If I went away, just go ahead and your audio faded yourself. out. So, yeah, you're fine. You know what? The connection, I think, because I'm by the ocean, isn't as good. Um, but if you want to just introduce yourself um, to the audience, just like a brief bio, and just I gave a lot of information, but anything else, I'm in my business manager's office. Sorry, so it's not the decor I usually have from my own office. Yeah. All right. Well, um, my name is Keith Leon S, and I'm a multiple international best-selling author, speaker, and a trainer. My wife and I did relationship work for years. We were uh, relationship experts and traveled the world doing that. And uh, then, then we started helping people to write their book. <laughs> and, uh, and we really love that and uh, are committed to that. So that's what we've been doing for, for many years. And as Abby mentioned, also I've uh, been working with angels and had contact with angels since I was a child, really. And so uh, August of this year, in 2019, I'll be stepping uh, fully into my life purpose project, which is a book that's coming out. We'll talk about that later. Awesome. Very cool. So let me know, how did you get connected to your intuition? So when did you first start to feel your intuition and how did you experience that? Mm. Well, I, from childhood, I could hear my guardian angel. And so he really helped me with that from a, from a very young age. Um, the way that I, that I connect even now is, is go within, go within, go within. So uh, prayer, meditation, whatever you want to call it, you know, I like to, uh, to sit and then ask a question and then listen and listen until I get the answer. And I think that's what a lot of people don't do. They'll, they'll ask the question, maybe listen for a minute till they have to go somewhere, but I'll yeah. sit for days until I get the answer. And uh, I did that with uh, the project that really put me on the map, the Who Do You Think You Are, uh, Discover the Purpose of Your Life book. All that was purely using my intuition. Um, and then another thing like that I love to recommend is, uh, is have, uh, have a first instinct journal. And when you get that instinct, the first instinct, write it down. Mm -hmm. And when it's in that journal, it's law. So it's, uh, I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, but the second instinct, the third, the fourth, the hundredth instinct, right? Sometimes I, I go so back and forth so many times, I can't remember what the first instinct yeah. is. But the first instinct is only always right, I've found. Yeah. So I write that down, and then if I waver and I can't remember, I can go back and say, ah, that's what the first instinct was, that's what I should do. That's awesome. I love that you said that because when I first created my course for people, I wrote that. It was like, trust your first gut instinct. And after that, it's your mind second guessing. It's almost yeah. like it's trying to rationalize what your intuition already knows. So I right. love that you said that because it's so simple. And I think we wonder, well, what's intuition? Actually, you're kind of living in your intuition right now. Like however you got here, your intuition got you here, you know? And so your mind's processing what your intuition already knows. Oh, so, yes. that's beautiful. Yeah like a computer that's beautiful I love it so how like as you followed your intuition how have you just seen that that created greater intimacy in your life I know with your partner but I'd like you to go into that and also in just business right because for me business is a very emotionally intimate experience you know with other people yeah so, I'd love for you to share your experience uh, yeah absolutely well with business my actually, the answer is uh, really is both because my wife yeah. and I are in business together and uh, for years, uh, I, how can I say this? My mother was a very strong character, very dominant. My grandmother, very strong character, very dominant. And so I tended to kind of allow somebody to kind of take over. And I would just be like, okay. Yeah. 
Wow. We, did, we did our business that way for years and we didn't have a lot of success. And there was a point where we came off of two failed projects and my wife said, you know, would you take over the business? I just need to go over here and recover, <laughs> lick my wounds, like take a minute, take a breath. Would you take over the business? And, uh, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And so the way that I did it differently than the way we did it was what I was talking about earlier. I would put away my plan of what I thought I needed to do that day. And this is when, um, when I, uh, I asked her if she could give me like the best book title I've ever heard and I'd be off and running. So she's really good at that. So a minute and a half later, she said, who do you think you are? I said, what? What did I do? She said, no, silly, that's the name of the book. And, uh, and so I was like, who do you think you are? That is like the best title I have ever heard. So, so what would it be about? So I went to prayer and meditation with that. What would this book be about? Mm. And I sat and I waited and I waited until I got an, uh, a vision of remembering when I was in my early 20s and I was looking for and to discover the purpose of my life. And I went to every church, synagogue, mosque, if there was somebody in a park, like on a, on a, on a, on a, on a pedestal preaching, I was listening because I wanted to know why I was here. And now by this point, I realized that I did know my purpose. And I did know why I was here and I could actually help other people discover theirs. So I did, who do you think you are? Discover the purpose of your life. And once I had that, I kept saying, well, what, what do I do next? How do I contact all these famous people that I want to contact? And all those questions, I put away my plan of what I needed to do that day and then sat, asked the question, and waited. And waited <laughs> till I got the answer. Mm -hmm. And when the answers dropped in, they were things that I didn't know. <laughs> you know, they came from another place like how to contact the people I now call it an elevator email and I teach it. I didn't have that. I didn't know how to do it. I had never been successful asking famous people to, to do anything for me. And now I got 68 people, very famous people to say yes to be in this book. Right. Yeah. I asked 80 people. I got 68 yeses. 10 of the no's were the publicist, not the person. So out of 80 asks, I got two no's and those two no's were only because they didn't want to be that vulnerable. Funny. That I was asking. So, so I was downloading all of this. And so that, that whole project was me contacting my angels, using, using my inner guidance system, my instinct. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I would just say, hey, what should I do here? And it would drop in immediately, and then I would, I would act on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, in doing that, we went where, from our first book where we had sold next to nothing. We had John Gray's endorsement on our book of a relationship book and hadn't sold five copies, right? Because I didn't know what to do yet and uh, hadn't asked for guidance. Just we, we did that with our heads. Yeah. And the second book, this one, I manifested all the people who could teach me exactly what to do. And, and the result was massive international best-selling book. And two weeks before the book came out, which I already had a huge joint venture book launch set up, so that would have been successful. But two weeks before that, Oprah held up Eckhart Tolle's book, about life purpose and made it the topic of the world. Mm -hmm. And if that isn't like manifestation, <laughs> I don't know what, but yes. it was just because I was just following my guides, following my guides, yeah. even down to the date that I set, right? To, to yeah. launch it. Seemed yeah. like too soon to me, but I did it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was amazing. So, so it, it, you know, when you are tuned into that and willing to sit and wait for the answer, I'd like to say um, this revealed within the space of two breaths. That's Can when you repeat that? In. Can you repeat that, Keith? I'm sorry, it froze for a second. Can you repeat okay. that? Okay. Uh, there's so much to be revealed in the space between two breaths. So I found that a lot of times I would breathe in, breathe out. And when I would have that divine download, it would come right in the space between two breaths it would just drop in in its entirety and i was like oh <laughs> or, depending on if, uh, which end of that breath i was on but right in between those two breaths it'll drop in so it's just uh, wow. I to share that. yeah it's the space and i think the space creates and then we can actually hear we can be receptive to what that higher guidance is without the fear you know i think there's a place of just unconditional love and non-judgment in the place of meditation right we're just in what is we're connecting with source with the universe which is unconditionally loving and so i think to have that space for ourselves you know that's why meditation is so important you now and we can really hear our intuition
Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So is there any advice you have about, you know, really just to give to our listeners how they can connect to their intuition and really know that it's their intuition guiding them um, rather than anything else, you know, to really be clear, yes, this is my intuition. I can trust it and to trust the answers also that they're getting. Mm. Well, the first instinct, <laughs> you know, that's why I keep a first instinct journal because, you know, I ask it and then and almost immediately you can, you can get the hit of yeah. what you should do or not do. And, right. and that's, I think, the one where maybe you resist the most yeah. <laughs> not to do it. And you're like, yeah, but, right? right. Everything you say, yeah, but, stay away from that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so writing it down like the second that you get it is so important. And, uh, and go within, go within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm so sorry. Who do you think you are that I talked about? So sorry. The connection just froze yeah. again. Go ahead. 68 people that, that were in that book and, and talked about Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in that book, Who Do You Think You Are? I remember there was this one person that said, uh, go within, go within, go within, go within, go within. <laughs> that was yeah. their answer to how can we discover the purpose of our life. And that yeah. just stuck with me because we all put so many words on it. 68 people put so many words on that and then one person said five and those were the ones that really stuck with me. Go within, mm -hmm. go within, go within, go within. Because mm -hmm. that's where I was and that's what I had done. So it just resonated. Mm -hmm. So funny. This is the second time today where I've seen a license plate that said something and it said inquire within. So you're like, go within, go within. I'm like, here you go. The universe is just getting the message. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience as far as just really how you've been able to create greater intimacy? So you followed your intuition. You talked about your business. How have you done that in your partnership with your wife? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I let that guide me all the time. Uh, wow. I, going all the way back to how we met, you know, uh, I created a relationship plan uh, because I, I, had a, I had 13 and a half years with my practice wife. That was my first wife. And I learned what not to do in a relationship. And uh, once, we, uh, once we split up, I had been with her since I was young. So I had no idea who I was. Only knew who I was with her. So I was starting fresh. And so I really looked at what was my part in this breakup. What, where, what, what didn't work? And how can I flip that? And then I identified... Um, the things that I really, really wanted in my next mate. And so when I looked at that piece of paper and that list that I created, I called the list, uh, there were a few things that, that I wasn't myself. And I knew that I had to become those things myself in order to attract someone who would be that. So I did all the work that I needed to do to become everything on the list. And then once I had done that, then I prayed on it, put the list away and knew that there would be nothing that I could do that would keep that from happening. And so going all the way back to that uh, and then uh, checking into uh, when I was ready to ask her to marry me, how would I do that? Right. And so I went to, to prayer and meditation with that. How should I do this? And what I got was we were taking a trip to Vermont to see her parents at Christmas time. And I had never been to Vermont. And uh, what I got is what I did. And that was that we, we went, we were jet lagged. We went to the house, we took a nap. And then I got up before she was. And then when she woke up, I was there with the ring because I wanted to propose to her when she was in the same bed that she had all those dreams about meeting her Prince Charming or, or however it was for her. I wanted her to be in the same bed of the dreams that she had when she got proposed to. Uh, so it's just, just following, always following that. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just always following that. It told me when to propose. Uh, and then I'm constantly listening in our, our relationship, and uh, and that's that's a beautiful thing. Like she'll say something in passing that she would love me to do, and then I'll do it. And I just hear a lot, like you really listen to me. Like I just said that in in passing that I'd love you to do that, and then and you really heard me, and then you did it, and I didn't have to ask again. Um, so it's, that's it's beautiful. Just, yeah, it's, for me, uh, intuition in relationship is listening, uh, acting on first instinct when I get it. And uh, did I say listening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, <laughs> you did. <laughs> That's so fun because right before I interviewed you, I interviewed Janet and she talked about listening as just being like your full body response, right? And so I think you're more mm -hmm. like me as well. I do, I do both of them, but you have the audio as well. So you actually hear your guides talking to you. So I have the same yeah. thing. I'd love for you to discern the difference between thought and guidance, like player audience, you know, because we get so many thoughts all day long. What is... What is your thoughts on the what is your thoughts on the thoughts? <laughs> uh, I usually so, have to usually have to work hard to get a thought or or thoughts come in without the asking. I find that my when I really get the answers is when I'm specifically asking for something and and then waiting for that for that answer, you know, that first instinct. Uh, thoughts are everything that comes after that usually or uh, thoughts or something that happened in passing when I'm working or when I'm trying to sleep some nights <laughs> right? uh -huh. and I didn't have all these thoughts about something coming up and and um, I'm excited about it I get yeah. wound up and I think those are thoughts uh, and when I sit lay down to go to sleep and then I do a process right uh, that that sets me up to get answers which is uh -huh. something that I do the who do you think you are project and I can share that really quick is like before I go to bed I'll say um, angels spirit God anybody who's for me and listening right now I would love an answer to this question and uh, and please deliver it to me in the form of a dream and then I say I'll remember my dreams I'll remember my dreams I'll remember my dreams I'll I say that like 50 60 70 times till I fade off and go to sleep and then uh, many times and all the way through the who do you think you are book project because I was working around the clock literally I would have dreams that would be exactly what my next step was so you can actually even tap into intuition while you're sleeping that's cool so i think what i'm hearing is the key is to ask the question so when you're wanting to get guidance ask the question and hear maybe the first thought which is the clear audience if you're asking your guides which really clear you know your guides are high beings of light so it's like you know connected it's like extensions of source right angels are you know embodiments of the light not in physical form, you know, so understanding and quite frankly, there's a lot of earth angels, like we're all earth angels, right? When we're carrying the light and giving the light, that is an earth angel. Um, yeah. Angel that I think you and I are talking to is these, these higher beings that are just holding the frequency of unconditional love. Yeah. Um, for me, I often hear it, and this is how I was able to discern as third person, right? Is it's like somebody's talking to me like I'm talking to you. It's not just my thoughts about myself like, oh, Abby, why did you do that? It's more like, hey, Abby, you know, go to Oregon for two or three months to, you know, heal a certain issue rather than, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're bad. You didn't heal, right? That's like the negative conditioning, I think, of the subconscious mind. So yeah. to really discern that, you know, it's really helpful for yeah. me. Yeah, well, that's the... And, and I'm blessed in that I do hear voices. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it's really clear when, I, when you hear a voice and it's like right here as if someone's standing right behind you in your ear, then it's really obvious. Uh, and then sometimes it's a little more subtle. Uh, and that's usually when I'm around people, if I'm in a room full of people, because uh, I do tend to talk back. <laughs> so I think sometimes, sometimes they lay back and maybe come in yeah. with a yeah. whisper of a thought instead of, the blatant voice so that I'm not sitting there talking to myself in a room full of people and people are like, I haven't right. come out all the way out of the angel closet till August yet. So people might be like, Ooh. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very cool. I love that discernment. So as you followed your intuition, how have you seen a greater impact, positive impact on the world happen? Like how have you just seen, we talked about earlier, a ripple of love with Janet, you know, like it's just like as we follow our intuitions, there's like a ripple of love that happens. But how have you seen that in your life? Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, man, everything from, from taking part in a, uh, an online chat group called Committed to Love years ago when MySpace was up, <laughs> right? That was like the first, the first big uh, online social media and being in that group. And uh, that's where I kind of got our, our re my relationship coaching chops down. Mm -hmm. And in that group, you know, there was a time where I saw somebody's little bubble. It was this, this teenager. And so I said, hey, how's it going? And, and we had this conversation. And I just really told her that how she had made, it, made a difference in in my life and the in the conversations and the connections that we've had and i i said a few things about how she 
you know, she makes a difference in the world and doesn't even know it and and things that I that I always say uh, and have for many many years and and then like a week later she wrote me back and said that uh, when I reached out to her she literally had a fistful of pills and a bottle of alcohol in her hand and was about to end her life when she heard ding and she said ah, just checked it out and then it was me and that I literally pulled her down from the ledge and saved her life that day and and I would I wouldn't have known that so uh, unless she shared it with me and and that's things like that have happened many many times where I'll say something and then I don't you know just don't know and then later they come back to me and say how that made a profound difference in their life um, uh, in being a publisher like you said we've published so many incredible authors and those books have touched lives and then they went on TV and they went on radio and they went and, and spoke and they've touched lives and then I've been on TV and I've been on radio and all the books that I've written have, have gone out there to the world and who knows who's shared that book with somebody else and gifted it to them and so I had a I had a friend a couple of years ago uh, point out to the, me that now potentially it could be a million lives that have been touched from the work that I've been doing uh, since I started writing books and being willing to get up on stage and and, and share of myself and and use my voice um, through music and and writing and teaching and all the things that I do and I and I hadn't thought about millions really. <laughs> And had a thought like that until he said it. And but when I started doing the math, it's it it really makes sense. Uh, so just being the message and being willing to share it and being willing to say things to people that people don't usually say to people just mm -hmm. because it came to you to say it, right? Uh, especially in, in in a loving way or a kind of thought. You know, it's a, we don't know if we smiled at somebody and and said nice to see you that that person might have felt like they weren't seen and they were about to end it. You could have mm -hmm. saved a life that day just by saying nice to see you. Yeah. You don't know that. You don't know. Yeah. Wow. Again, it goes back to that ripple of love, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's awesome. So what are the challenges that you've seen in people trusting and following their intuition? Um, and how have you helped them to break through it? But the first part is what are the challenges? Yeah. <laughs> uh, challenges is man life can become havoc <laughs> you know it gets especially recently it's it's crazy out there I'm watching people that are that are not have no spiritual practice that aren't uh, meditating and they're just watching CNN all day like I mm -hmm. I can't even imagine being alive in that energy right now uh, with with all the negative stuff that's out there and so that's why I'm teaching people that first instinct journal that I was talking about. Uh, challenge uh, that I also see is people not being consistent with following their intuition. So some, it's like, oh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I do, <laughs> and then sometimes I don't. Well, hopefully the sometimes I don't is the time where, where spirit says you should take a left instead of the right you normally take on the way home. Because when they say take a left instead of a right, and it's something you do every day, there's probably an accident over there waiting for you. So, so being consistent with listening to your intuition can uh, keep you out of a, a lot of trouble. And uh, and and I think not trusting that that there's a part of you that always knows the answer to every question before it's even asked. I think uh, I think that's a challenge. And I think uh, when you really get clear that all the answers truly are right inside of me. I just have to sit down long enough and, and, and ask them and listen for the answers and be consistent with that when you'll really start to ramp things up and, and manifest things at a, at a faster rate. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I guess the only thing that's coming to me is how do you trust that? Because I think that the answers are in, I mean, that's the whole intuitive success coaching process, like the answers within you, you are love, right? But then mm -hmm. there's the second guessing that we talk about. And also, I think other people's energy. So that isn't ours, like we can take on other like people like me that are very empathetic, we can take on other people's energy and not even realize it. Be like, why do I feel this way? This is actually somebody else's energy. So, yeah. <laughs> You know, how can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, well, usually the, the energy that isn't mine, it's other people's energy, is the negative stuff that's on yeah. me. 
So, so anytime I'm feeling like, oh man, I feel like crap right now, or I'm, or I'm really angry, or something that isn't in alignment with who I truly am, uh, it really jumps out now. It really jumps out. And I remember asking my dear friend and, and mentor Jack Canfield, like, how do you ever have like a, a bad day? <laughs> do you ever have a bad day? And he said, bad day, no. Uh, bad hour, not anymore. Bad couple minutes, yes. But what happened is I. I've spent so many years actually using the tools that I teach instead of just talking about them. And I spent so much time really getting clear on who the who I am and the core true essence of my being and who I am and how much I love and all of that. And so now anything that's not in alignment with that, uh, he also set it up, and this is what I did as well, that, uh, that it would feel like tension in his stomach. That's his trigger. Anytime his stomach tenses up or it feels like he got a gut shot, uh, then he knows that's, that's not his, or he knows that's not in alignment with who he truly is. And so it's somebody else's energy. Yeah, and that's his trigger to then go to, the, go to work. So either to clear the energy if it's someone else's, or if it's just negative energy that was coming at him and he gets the stomach tightening, to move into love, to move into forgiveness, to let go of whatever they said, you know, realize that that's their stuff and it's not yours, uh, whatever your, your, your tools are to, uh, to get through that. Um, but I think with empaths, <laughs> which you're speaking about, right, uh, it's so important that when you are going into a large room, an event, somewhere where there's going to be a lot of people, to have something that protects you, <laughs> right? Uh, it could be a pink bubble. Of protection it could be calling in the angels right our archangel michael will you protect me or or uh, see angels wrapping their wings around you uh, wrap your your wings of protection around me i have uh, many that i do i love that one having the, the angels just just surround me with all of their love before i go into to a big room and uh, i had to do that when i was speaking for many years when you get up in front of a thousand people you're feeling a thousand people's energy <laughs> It can be it can be interesting to stay focused <laughs> for a ninety minute talk with a ah, thousand people's energy coming at you. So so you know wrapped with the uh, protection of just for now, and unless I stop down in the event and say now, I'd love to take some questions. Or now I now I want to feel into the energy of the room and answer what's going on in the room. Then I'll invite that, and then the. the comes down long enough to get that information then it goes back up and I answer the question so those are the tools that I use because I am a like big time empathic and uh, and, and it was really interesting um, sorting all that out for many years especially uh, when you speak <laughs> right? oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I wonder if sometimes taking the angel wings down when you're in the company of maybe your intimate partner or people that you feel lit up by, you actually allow that to come in to energize you, right? I just had that thought. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's fun. Oh my God, I love it. I love it interviewing you. So, God, let's see what else. Um, wow. So, tell me more about you know how when you feel your intuition aligned and connected. How do you find that people find you? Because I feel like this show is also about attracting your ideal mate. So um, to trust that, like you said, I became the person that I basically wanted to attract. And so I had no doubt in my mind, you said it in other words, but basically I had no doubt in your mind that you were going to find that person and that person was going to find you, which is so well said. But I'd love for you to elaborate on that. Uh. Uh, what was the, the first half of the question? So said? basically, you said you became the person that yeah. you wanted to attract. And so yeah. how did you follow your intuition to then become that person? And basically, what are the steps that other people can learn to attract their partner into right. their lives by following their intuition? Oh, okay. Uh, the, the process that I used and the process that my wife used for us to attract each other were basically the same exact process she called hers a marketing plan and mine was called the list and so hers was had different different labels and then she listed like the product she listed the service she listed all, <laughs> all the things right and then she had the same realization that she needed to become those things and then mine was just called the list and I made a, an extensive list of exactly who and, and and because of that 13 and a half year 
seemingly failed relationship, I wanted to make sure that that when I did this again, that that I got it right this time. <laughs> and so not only did I list qualities uh, within, but I also listed physical qualities so that, so that I could see her coming from a mile away and then look at the inner qualities. And and so so some of those qualities were things like being honest. And then I thought, well, am I 100% honest myself? And in the job that I was in, they constantly had us lying when people called on the phone and telling them like how they weren't they weren't there or like the words that they said, tell them I'm not there. And I just did it for somebody else. Oh, they're not here. All right. But when I was looking at this thing that said honest, I was like, I can't do that anymore and be that. So I had to go to my bosses and say, I won't lie for you anymore. I won't. I'll tell them you're here and you're working and you're busy. And that's true. And that you don't take telemarketing calls. And I can tell them a lot of things that will, will get rid of them, which is what you want without lying to them. And so I'm, I'm not doing that. If we're late on a FedEx deadline and you want to lie to somebody, you go ahead, but I'm going to tell them why I'm late. You know, yeah. <laughs> so you make the call. Yeah. There were things that I had to clean up and I had to work on. Um, I did, I took a, um, I took some classes to to work with some of the things that I needed to work with so that I could become that list 100%. I did a lot of prayer and meditation, a lot of soul searching to find out who I was because like I said, I had no clue who I was. So I was starting from scratch. So I had to find out what do I like, <laughs> right? Who am I? And yeah. so there was so much um, soul searching and really listening for the answers you know, that's really where that, that started during that process uh, of consistently, consistently listening to my instinct it happened during that process. And then I, I attracted my perfect mate. And that's why 19 and a half years later, we're, we're, we just are still crazy, stupid in love with each other uh, and, uh, and have such great communication tools because we, we came together and, and said, like, Here's how we don't want to be in a relationship. So what can we do to create the relationship that we want? And one thing was to have clear and effective communication. And ultimately, uh, we created a process and that is why we got John Gray to endorse our relationship book was our relationship, uh, our, our communication process and the way that we communicate. And that just came out of really putting a focus on that. It was so important to us. And at one point when we were, uh, in in the middle of an argument, my wife was like, oh, can, "Hang on, I'm going to get a pencil and paper. Do you mind if I write this down?" I'm like, "Whatever." <laughs> and so we she wrote down everything that we said, and when we looked at it later, we realized that we had we had created this this process, this five statements that we were saying each time, and then filling in the blanks with what was going on in the moment, and uh, and that was instinctual. Right? We didn't plan on that it's like I had come up with two of the things I think it was and she came up with the other three but we we're doing all five every time it's amazing. Yeah. it's amazing wow that's awesome I love that you guys are so like synergistic and like doing the same thing in your own way and of course you come together how could you not and I mean, well, you're we're, really... we're twin flames we're twin flames so we're really one person split in two and we keep finding each other over and over again so so that's an interesting dynamic too <laughs> <laughs> when, hmm. when you're was, pretending, pretending to be two, <laughs> and uh, it can get get pretty crazy. I always wondered what twin flame meant. That's an interesting way of describing it. So say yeah. that you're basically the same person coming together. Yeah. yeah, soulmates are like, you know, people and and spirits and entities that you've run into over time, and and I think a lot of people have many many soulmates, hmm. uh, but twin flames are one soul split in two and and we've done that lifetime after lifetime after lifetime so like I was a woman and she was the man or we we're both women or however we did it in that lifetime but we we are one split in two and proof of that is my wife and I everywhere we go people are like oh you know and they connect with us and they love us uh, like at a, a grocery store the same checker that we talked to for in, in Florida for over a year I went in without my wife. She didn't recognize me. I was talking to her, saying, "Hey, how you doing?" And her energy was like, "Yeah, okay, you know, like not connected." But when we're together, it's like, "Oh, we're old friends forever." So she literally didn't see me when it was just me because I was only half of who I am. 
So wow. very interesting. So that's yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. I love that. It's a very cool description. I've never heard it before. That's awesome. So how can you help other people find their twin flame? I know it's kind of the same question, but like, is there anything else that like you felt just attracted that it's almost like, yeah, you bringing part of you back. I know I felt that with my current partner too. It's like, if you're not with them or something's disconnected, like you almost feel like a part of you is missing. And like my head would even spin, you know, I'd be like, wait, what's going on? You know, my body is out of alignment now. So I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. Well, yeah, making a list, you know, you're, you're becoming the list and all that. You can also ask Spirit, God, the universe, your angels, which are with you all the time, uh, ask specifically for what you want. You know, if twin flame is what you're interested in, ask for that. Deliver me my twin flame and let me know when that person is standing in front of me without a shadow of a doubt. Like with, with Mara, I, one of the things I wrote on my list is that her light will enter the room before she does. That was the first thing on my list. And so when a light walked into Agape Spiritual Center door and then behind it came everything that I had described wow. physically, right? Then I knew it was her. And then when she walked across the room, then we started talking. And as I got to know her, then I was like, oh, my God, it was the whole the whole list, like in its entirety, right? So, so uh, asking for what you want is so important, and especially if you're going to invoke evoke angels, right? They, they, uh, your guardian angel can help. Like their one job is to two jobs: love you unconditionally and get you to your expiration date. Right? There's a date that you're supposed to not be here anymore, and there's so many moving parts now in the world that sometimes accidents can happen and take you out before that date. So they're here to just like whoop, reach in and, and, and do what they have to do to keep you here till your date, right? And so, so a lot of people say, well, how can I hear my angel? How can I get guidance from my angel? You have to ask because that's really their only job. Their job isn't to whisper in your ear unless you specifically ask. The job isn't to show you miracles unless you ask for it. They're not supposed to bug you, get involved, unless you ask. Other than that, they stand there, they just float around and just love you unconditionally, send you love all the time. You'll feel that. That's not getting involved. That's just what they do because they love you. They're with you for this life. Why not? And then get you to your expiration date. That's all. That's their job. That's it. And then when you say, oh, and by the way, I would, I'm open and willing to hear your guidance and sh show up in ways that I will know that it's you. Uh, all of those things, then, then they, get to, they get to play. Uh, but I will warn, uh, it takes a lot out of them to physically show up, like in a manifestation that you can see. So if you need that type of proof and you ask for it and you get it once, then just trust that and let it go and don't ask them to do it every time. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy to, to do that. Yeah. And uh, this is a tip I could share so that, you know, you can keep them happy too. <laughs> let unconditional well, love back. <laughs> yeah, right. I just, I'm like in awe of what you're saying because um, I remember an experience one time where I literally pulled in front of a car, like full on pulled in front. And there was another hand that came on the wheel and literally moved my car over. And I was like, what was that? I just felt light and two other hands moving it. And I was yeah. like, whoa. And it was, I was right out of a yoga class. Like I was in this crazy enlightened state that I was like, not even in my body, clearly like going in front of another car, but something else moved me. And so, you know, I've traveled and done a lot of, I think I've shared the nonprofit. So I've put myself in situations that aren't necessarily physically safe. And then even had questions like, am I going to be safe going here or going there? And so when you said, you know, you have an expiration date, there's almost a sense of safety and letting go of surrender of like, I'm always protected as long as I need to be here. And so is everybody else, you know, that we have our guardian angels and our sole purpose our mission going back to your book, you know, of we are here by divine design and divine purpose. And so we're not leaving until that's done. And it's like my grandma's a testament. Of that. I mean, she's like, I think just turned 90. And it's like each year, it's like, we think she's going to die. But she's like, no, I'm here, you know, because it's like, she's like, I'm not done yet. Like, you're going to get married and you're going to be happy. <laughs> that's probably her agenda for me. But it's like, she knows she's not done yet. So yeah. it's kind of like seeing that there's a higher reason for us all. And I just, I just want to say thank you because that was for me personally something that I'm like, oh, it actually, I don't know what the word is, but it, yeah. it helps me let go of that fear of death, whatever that word is, you know, um, where you're like, wow, I actually don't need to be afraid to physically die. 
I can choose to follow my intuition wherever I go, but I'm always safe at a physical level because my soul, my intuition, and my guardian angels got my back. <laughs> right, that's right. We all have at least one. <laughs> I get two at least. I thought there was two, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. believe you. Yeah, at least one. At least one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's so cool. So um, I love these conversations. So I know we talked a little bit about guides and angels. So I'll ask you that. How do you particularly connect to your guides and angels? Mm. Whew, I, just, uh, I just get it all the time now. But uh, in, as, as a child, I, that was when I literally was hearing a voice all the time. And I always knew, I didn't see my guides and angels, but I always knew where he was. And I because the voice was coming <laughs> from there and uh and and then doing the who do you think you are project i, I was just you know, calling in everybody <laughs> and just hearing all like different voices at different times telling me what to do and just doing what i was told and having this just this miracle of creation happen before my eyes and going from from keith hot keith who like not knowing anything about the book business to the book guy in a year like they called me the book guy because I was the go-to guy for all things books, right? So in a year's time, that that doesn't happen without angels, <laughs> and uh, and so now now it's really uh, first instinct because, like I said, it's it I don't you know I know it takes work for you to give me a voice. If I need a voice, I'll specifically ask for it. Other than that, it's just I'm following intuition now. It's the same exact thing. You don't have to work as hard. Just give me the hit, and then I'll and I'll do it. And so I've. I, I'm that I'm with that so much that if I have a paid call with a client who pays me money, I tune in before a call every time. What's the best best possible outcome that can come from this? How am I feeling? Am I present? Will I be valuable? And if I'm not a hundred percent for that call, I'll tell them. Since I, you know, I feel like I'm eighty percent today. Would you rather reschedule the call and have me at a hundred percent, or are you happy with eighty percent? Uh huh. Right, because uh, and some people are like, "Well, you're 80." And <laughs> other uh -huh. people, well, I'll take it. But there's time where I'm on fumes, where I'm like, "I don't think I'm going to be valuable at all to you today." So, would you like to reschedule, or do you want me to just go? <laughs> you know, uh -huh. sometimes they're scheduled. They're like, "I don't care. I'll take it." But, uh, but to to play it at that level uh -huh. is is so important in the work that I'm doing. Uh, I didn't, I've got to be. What I'm, what I'm teaching. And so I, I am that. I am. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love, Keith, is I always say love paves the way. Like since I was like 19 and did my wellness and I remember it was like love paves the way. So if you listen to your intuition, it's exactly what you said. What's the best help possible outcome for whatever? And then your intuition activates the path of light. It's like it's already there. So it's like you can imagine like multiple paths and it's like, okay, the best possible outcome me and my soul for this person for everybody involved and then it's like you listen to your intuition which is that light soul guidance and it's like you're drawn to the light like you were to your partner like it's just like a magnet so I just I love what you said that's such a great question I'm going to repeat it again what is the best possible outcome for my relationship you know like whatever it could be you know this is obviously intuition to intimacy but then to activate your intuition and trust your first instinct follow the light you know, be true to yourself. The other thing you said is something about honesty, which has come up in another interview too. And it's like, to be honest is to be real, you know, and then you're going to get truth back instead of like kind of convoluting or making it into something that it's not. And I think that's key. Um, I know I've done that before. Like I want this person to be this way, but this is how this person shows up. Okay. Like, let's be real, you know, and be real with ourselves too. So I love what you said. I think that's a great, great question. Yeah. Beautiful. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, just in general or to that? <laughs> to that, to that, yeah. I think it's a great, like, just to roll with it. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, so I know that you work with people a lot. Um, we're going to go into that soon. I think I want to ask, is there anything else in general around the whole subject of to the intimacy that you'd like to add. Hmm. I I think it's just so important to know that um, that you are loved and and you're loved 
when you're in relationship with somebody, you are, they don't want to hurt you. You know, anytime that they say something that is, uh, is hurtful is most likely some programming conditioning that they have some kind of garbage that they're dragging with them. And, and it's not them it goes back to what you're saying earlier about empaths and people carrying other people's energy. Uh, like the bully is bullied at home. Right, the bully at school is bullied at home, and that's where where that person got it. And so, so that person loves you, and they don't mean to do what they do. They've just been trained in that behavior, and so when they act and do that behavior and do that thing, then your question is: Is that a deal breaker or not? Is that thing that they're doing because they're not going to change it, right? Ever. <laughs> You don't think they're ever. Mm -hmm. The only time they would ever change it is if it was their idea to change it. Other than that, they'll change it for a little bit, but then it'll come back every time because they didn't do it for themselves. They did it for you. So the only time change happens is when that person goes, I need to change this, does the work they need to do and changes it. Other than that, and, and in relationship, who am I to ask that person to change one thing about them? There's somebody out there who would love all that stuff that's driving me crazy. Someone would love that. So who am I to ask them to change one thing? So unless, unless I can change my mind about what they're doing, then, and if it's a deal breaker, then I need to get out. <laughs> I need to go on and find somebody who's a match to me, where, where they'll love everything about me, I'll love everything about them, and anything that comes up that looks like this, we're both willing to do the work that it takes to identify it and get through it. We're both willing to do the work that it takes. And, but, but I, my first wife, like we were friends until when she passed away last year, we were the best of friends because the friendship wasn't the part that didn't work. It was the relationship. It was communication. It was horrible. And so just because we weren't married didn't mean that I didn't want to, that I wanted to lose a friend, you know, and, and neither did she. So we stayed friends like, like her whole life. And, and that, that taught my son a lesson, right? And, uh, and he's super loving. And that didn't make me love her any less because we weren't together, right? I still loved her. So that coming back to what I said, that person that you're in relationship with loves you. Like they do. And anything that they come at you with that doesn't look like love is a learned behavior something that they learned and they're just throwing it up on you. But truly they do love you, but that doesn't mean that you need to stay in a relationship with them. Mm, that's, I'm so glad you said that. I feel like you said that for me because I think there's so much as empaths, obviously, I don't know how many other people, but most likely a lot of people are empaths listening to this. For me, I took it on. I would take on the energy be like, I'm the light, I can do it. And I got so exhausted that it was just, it drains it, right? And so at some point, what I'm hearing you say is when you match up with your right partner, it's like, honestly, like my best friend and business manager of 10 years, I remember when we were together long ago, he said, you know, what? I love you for what you're not. Mm -hmm. It was like, there's a certain freedom where you're like, I can never mess up. <laughs> you know, like you love me for like everything I'm not. Well, awesome. Everything I am is just bonus, right? So it's like, you can never fail. And to me, that's unconditional love. And I guess I want that for myself and everybody listening. And you have it. And I want us all to know that we can ripple that um, when we're following our intuition to greater intimacy, that it's all available. Um, it's fascinating, whether it's a twin flame or I don't know how else it could be. I mean, do you have any other ways? Because I'm like, well, I guess we all need to marry our twin flames. Is that true? Or is there other types of partnerships that work even better because they are matched up? Um, and we're not trying to change the other person. We're just like, hey, changes from the inside. This is who I am. This is who you are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you want a twin flame, you can ask for it, but know what you're asking for. I know. I've, I've received mine, and it's intense, so watch out. <laughs> it's, it's even harder. Uh, you, know, you really got to be able to be able to do the work and keep in mind that that's who you are, and that's what you're doing, uh, and that and that helps a lot. But, uh, but I think, uh, you know, that's why I said there's a lot of soulmates, right? I think if you find a soulmate and then you find a soulmate who's willing to do the work that it takes, right, uh, then that can work out, you know, all the time. And, I, and I've had soulmates in, in work. I've had soulmates at, you know, churches, other reverends. I've had people that were soulmates that we just, we just knew each other the second we saw each other. There was nothing. We didn't have to catch up 
on what happened from that moment uh, before that moment we just met in that moment and went forward because everything was really taken care of uh, yeah. so that that's like a flag when you're in front of somebody for the first time and you feel like like you know them already haha <laughs> that's a white flag like no, instead of red flag <laughs> angel flag yeah uh, right so then maybe this is something i want to look into and then really you can find out pretty pretty quickly when people are willing to do the work and without willing to do the work then that that would be a great friend for you to have <laughs> mm -hmm. a great totally. soulmate friend for you to have but yeah in a relationship man you really got to have have the, the willingness to do the work because yeah you know if it was easy everybody would be together for 25 30 40 years right. <laughs> yeah that's the other thing I'm just going to mention that you talked about earlier is asking for the sign so like your wife you know you said please show me light and then her so kind of ask for a sign so you know that it is you know like for me it was his eyes you know like I knew what the green eyes looked like so I saw the eyes oh that's it so you want to make sure that you're kind of setting yourself up to receive what it is that you've asked for. So you know it's there, you know, the confirmation. So I just wanted to remind everybody that because that was a great point to highlight. Yeah. Great. Very cool. So is there anything else you want to share and then move into, you know, what you're offering? I mean, you do so much, Keith, and I honestly don't even know. I know you're on a book tour right now and you have so much going on. So what is it that you'd like to share on how people, how they can connect with you in the best way and what you're even offering? Quite frankly, I, I'm so, sorry I didn't ask you earlier. I just knew you'd always say whatever you needed to say, so I didn't worry about it. But how can they connect and how can you help them? Mm. Well, one of the things that, that I do is help people to get their books out of them. And that's something that we talked about yeah. at length of the first time that we connected. And that is that, that you have you have a story to tell, you have a story to share, you have something that you know that other people don't know, and they would be psyched to get that information from you, and they will pay you to get it, right? And this could be something that you take for granted, that you think like, oh, who would care about that, right? Yeah. Who would even care about that? Yeah. Telling you, there's an audience that cares about that, and they're waiting for it, and they want it. So what my wife and I do is we get you to go from Someday I'm going to write a book to actually doing it. <laughs> and uh, when people, you've heard that, how many times have you heard that? Someday I'm going to write a book. Anytime I hear that now, I say, oh, great, can you pull up your, your calendar? Yeah, okay, now show me where in the calendar that it says someday. Because someday never comes. Will you commit to starting on Tuesday? Because <laughs> so we have to have quantifiable goals and, and keep those, keep those appointments with ourselves and keep those goals. And so, so we have ways to help uh, bring grace and ease to the writing process. And that's what we've been doing, uh, writing books ourselves and helping other people to write books now for 15 years. Um, yeah. Well, the other thing that I got from, you know, working with you is you, you reach a lot of people. So you not only help people go through the process, but you also know how to get your book out into the world. Yeah, and I'll tell you how to teach you how to ask people of influence to help you in a way where they'll say yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what, uh, before, when my wife and I were working together, right, I was a champion of how not to ask. And what I revealed in, when it was just me was, was how to ask in a way that's so easy for them to say yes, that they will. And so that's one of the things that I, I love to teach and teach all over the world. And, and we just, uh, like, that's a, just a bonus that I get when people work with us. Uh, and so, uh, so that's what we do. So the, so the ways that we do that, you know, we have, uh, first of all, for relationship stuff, right, more about that, the, the, the tool, right, the communication tool that got John Gray to endorse our book. Uh, how did I manifest? Mara, how did Mara manifest me? How have thousands of people since manifested their perfect mate using the seven steps to successful relationships? You can get that book on Amazon. Um, it's, it's there, the seven steps to successful relationships by Keith and Mara Leon, L-E-O-N. So uh, I put it up for, I think it's 9.95, right? I just, I want you to have it. And it's a workbook. It's like the, the class you would, take if you came to see us we put in a book for 9.95 and you can write right in it and, and work the process and attract what, whatever you want so that's one way you can uh, work with us for relationship stuff 
as far as a book, we have a we have a very in-depth home study course. So if you're the one that's like, I will write the book, I just need the information, uh, we'll give you the information. And while you're writing the book, then I'll teach you the business of books through the home study course. So you'll know how to be, be a person of influence on the other side of that project, how to get endorsements, how to get forward, all those things that, that you were talking about, Abby, those are all in the home study course. And then there's bonuses worth uh, way more than the investment. Uh, so the home study course is uh, usually uh, $995 worth every cent of that. Uh, but because you're on this call, we're just going to half that. So it'll be $495. What, uh, let me see what, my, what we did. Uh, $495. And so you go to bakeyourbooknow.com. Bakeyourbooknow.com. And then put in the coupon code when you're you're filling everything out. ITI, so that's intuition, <laughs> ITI 495, ITI 495, and then it'll knock the price down to 495. And then the last way is the way that uh, I is my favorite. <laughs> and that's, uh, and that is called the You Speak It book process. So if you're like me and you're busy helping other people, you're being of service to others. And when you think, okay, it's time to write my book, and that feels like a heavy, uh, you're, you're so used to giving other people uh, your time, right? And, and it might even be hard for you to keep an appointment with yourself because you are there serving others. Uh, we created a book process called the You Speak It book process where all you have to do is show up to seven phone calls, and we'll pick your brain in a very specific way, and in those seven phone calls, we get all the information we need to create a book for you that you'll be proud of, help you get those endorsements that you want to get, help you know how to use the book as a business card to get clients, and how to use the book as a launch pad, as a, um, to be able to get and create all of the things that you want to do, because the, the reason that they will have you on their stage, on their TV show, on their radio show, the reason they will have you on webinars like we're doing right now, the reason they will have you on anything is because you have a book. It all starts with the book and your willingness to share with others the beautiful work that you're here to do in this world. And, uh, and so I get to help you deliver your message to the world. So the You Speak It process, uh, if you want to just connect and talk more about that, my personal calendar system is www.meetme.so. <laughs> Awesome. Slash Keith Leon S. Again, uh, www.meetme.so. So that's S O slash Keith Leon S. And that will go to my calendar system and, uh, and we'll just connect with you and tell you about that program if you want to hear more about it. That's Those awesome. are the three, the three ways that, that came to me when I was thinking about what we were going to be talking about on this call. That's awesome. I love it. So what we'll do, if you want to send me an email, Keith, I will put that on the website so everybody has the links really easy. So yeah, I really appreciate that. And some people will probably see this on YouTube, but we'll put that on the site, um, followyourintuition.com, where they can get your direct links. Okay. So awesome. Thank you so much, Keith. It's always such a pleasure to connect with you. And thank you, everybody else, for joining us. It's just been amazing and mm -hmm. such a gift. So is there one sentence that when people just think about intuition to intimacy and following their intuition that they can say to themselves that you want to leave everybody with? Like follow your intuition or whatever. Is there something like that that you want to, as a mantra, they can use to really find or deepen their perfect partnership? Oh, to find their perfect partner. I think I am that. Or deeper. I, I am that. Dot, dot, dot. I am. I love it. You say I am that I am. But I, like to, I like to put the ellipses. I, I am that I am. Because everything that you are is what you'll attract. Like attracts like, especially when it comes to qualities. Like attracts like. So, so who you are, who you become, who you're willing to be and share that with others. I am that. I am. And the more you can say that mantra and get to where you know and feel that that's absolutely true, then, then, then your light will beam out so that it comes in the room before you do. And then people will say, 
what's up with him? <laughs> what's yeah. up with him? Yeah, including your perfect mate. So. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. I am that. Dot, dot, dot. I am. That's great. I love it. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you on the next show. Bye. Take care. <laughs>